Um, after, after the events that took place in Caracas in 1989, known as El Caracaso, the disenchantment with the Venezuelan political system led to the proliferation of discourses of anti-politics. Such discourses were fundamental to Hugo, Hugo Chavez's race to power and to the continuation of the Bolivarian Revolution. Um, by having a look at Venezuelan films um, cataloged as of the socio-marginal genre and the representation of the figure of El Malandro as representative of urban violence, I would argue that Venezuelan <coughs> commercial cinema has contributed to produce and reproduce discourses of anti-politics. The origins of the Malandro in Venezuela are associated to the slums themselves, um, with the initial waves of rural migrants that settled in the outskirts of the main cities. According to oral accounts, there were used to be two common trans restaurants around the 1940s, catalogued as the El Guapo del Barrio, um, as a common tug, or the Roba Gallinas, who was a hen thief. And these were considered to be sort of people that will um, drink a lot and didn't mind getting into machete fights uh, or, or knife fights all the time. These are recorded by Elias Lisa Abuela. Um, evidently, these sorts of crimes denote a rural way of living associated to the formations of the slums as liminal territories. Um, perhaps one of the first filmic representations of the life in the slums corresponds to La Valandre Isabel in, in 1941, where it is represented as a place of vices, um, there's violence and witchcraft. Um, this was used to be a, a slum in, in La Guaira and disappeared later. Um, but it is not until the 1950s, with the production of La Caninata by Cesar Enriquez and Caina Adolescente by Chabot, where the slum becomes the principal setting and the story center on issues related to poverty, that films began to be openly used as a medium for social critique. Uh, both films portray the difficulties of making a life in the city when you are poor mm -hmm. and live in a slum. Their main characters have to constantly resist the influence of criminals and vices that surround them, usually portrayed through alcohol or prostitutes. Um, however, they are presented with the possibility of social movement through determination and hard work. For instance, La Escalinata, the staircase, literally represented the ascent to live the life of the slums, and the slum was, a, was the place that they all wanted to live. Um, in Caina Adolescente, Juan and his mother have just moved to Caracas in search of opportunities. Juana's naivete uh, gets her involved with a criminal, uh, the man that ends up in prison, <laughs> who also practices witchcraft. Um, and, and in the end, Juan is actually advised to leave the city and go back to the countryside. Um, the liminal character of the slum rendered it an ambivalent place, a territory of disorder. It is perhaps in the 1970s when the term malandro begins to be used more widely to refer to a specific type of transgressors associated to the slum's youngsters, a figure that engages in various criminal activities in the city but often participates in the community of the slum. Thus, a figure originated from the slum and marked by violence, but that knows how to move between the formal and the informal spheres and, uh, of the legal and the illegal. It is also in the 1970s that the production structure supported by the state and by the existence of a re receptive national audience allowed Venezuelan cinema to reach commercial levels. During this period, catalogued as a new Venezuelan cinema, Venezuelan filmmakers could successfully reach the general public and a group of them perhaps perceiving themselves as active social critics rather than mere entertainment, uh, entertainers uh, took this opportunity to voice <coughs> non-conformist points of view and make different political statements. Therefore, the representation of violence and rebellious marginal characters such as criminal prostitutes, guerrilla fighters and malandros became recurrent and the subsequent success of films like Cuando Quiero Llorar No Lloro like Emma de Judas and Soy un Delincuente, which when it was released even beat Jaws to, in the national box office of, of the year, proved that there was an interest in the public for films portraying current social issues. For instance, the first film that marks the beginning of the new Venezuelan cinema is a heavily political and social film based on Miguel Otero Silva's novel, Cuando Quiero Llorar No Lloro. And there, the three main characters, born on the same night and by coincidence sharing the same name, 
Victoria, you know, each represent a different social class. And through them, we witness the resulting forms of violence of such class system. The film comprises two of the main themes that become recurrent and perhaps most significant in the Venezuelan cinematography, the political guerrilla struggle and the social marginal violence. During this period, we witnessed the actual use of the word malandro in the films, as well as the use of a sort of slang that distinguishes them from the rest of the characters. The violence in the film becomes more explicit, both in the criminal activities and in the punishments by the police. So does the excessive consumption of alcohol, drugs, and sexual relations. Of, uh, weapons become more common, but are usually restricted to specific jobs. Most of the time, they're kept hidden. Um, in, in those uh, screen grabs, we can see that this, these are moments when uh, the main character is being arrested and, and is interrogated and being beaten up, and, and that happens frequently. Um, so, the slums constitute the territory of the malandro, a place where they can relax, party, and hide, and most of the crimes are committed in the city. For instance, in So in Delinquente, almost every time we see Ramon, Brizue Ramon Antonio Brizuela or one of his friends in the city, it is because they are about to rob someone. In this sense, symbolic borders are drawn. A police officer tells Ramon uh, that if he sees him again in Bello Monte, Chacaito, Las Mercedes, uh, all three middle-class neighborhoods, he will, he will arrest him. The relationship, so we see that there is a relationship that is based mostly on fear, since prisons are portrayed as chaotic places of torture. Um, and the police, whenever, the, so whenever there is a siren, we just see the malandros run, there is not really a facing of the police. And the, and, when, and the police is depicted as racist, repressive, and, and, and even sadist at moments. The idea of social, um, of social mobility, or I will, uh, as you were saying, the, the, that idea of the future of, of, the, of the character, um, Practically, it starts to disappear here, it becomes blurry, or is only ambition as a result of big crimes that will allow them to somehow retire, as in, in Reincidente, which was the, the continuation of Soy Delincuente, uh, when Ramon organizes a gang to start robbing banks ac across the country and, and raises a malandro of higher standard. Um. The 1980s, especially after what was known as the Black Friday in 1983, it was mentioned earlier, the, the economic crisis, were marked by a profound economic crisis that revealed the frailty of the system. Moreover, the coming to light of various ca cases of embezzlement and misuse of public resources led to the association of the economic crisis with corruption. And, and this became very salient in the, I think, in, in Venezuelan imaginary. Not by coincidence, the corruption of the institutions becomes a recurrent element in the socio-marginal films of the time, such as Retén de Katia, Macu, La Oveja Negra, Retén de Mujeres, to name a few. So even though the image of the malandro has not changed significantly, now the image of the prison is not only chaotic and repressive, but also very corrupted. And in both Macu and La Oveja Negra, policemen abuse their authorities their authority and get involved in criminal activities. Interestingly, in all the mentioned films, however, the end result is the removal and the arrest of the corrupt officer, connoting somehow that the institutions are not essentially corrupted, but that it is rather corrupted individuals that taint their image. <coughs> however, in the film Los Criminales, we actually witness an inversion of blame, as it is to corrupt politicians and the rich wives depicted as racist and somehow perverted who, who capture a malandro and they actually kind of torture him uh, when he's in, in their house. According to Pedrocini and Sanchez, in a, the events of the Caracas in, in, in 1989 uh, constitute a turning point in the understanding of the figure of a malandro. The new context characterized by lack of trust in, in institutions and the radicalization of violence generated new types of malandros that started to be regarded as some sort of slum ravagers. Um, that's my translation of azote de barrio, which it's a common term. These, these, these are what they, they, they will, um, she will catalog, they will catalog as, as uh, formed by bands and, and street children will be the, the main figures of this new type of malandro. 
the first film from the social marginal genre of the decade, Dispar and Matar, which is um, Shoot to Kill, by Carlos Apurro, makes an explicit ref reference to the events of El Caracaso, as a, reporter, as a reporter goes through images of the riots and repression while working on a piece that somehow justifies the uprising. The film starts with a sequence of children playing ball in the street who then rob and kill a passerby. The image of the child Malandro evokes the loss of innocence and the impossibility of trust in anybody, which is then reinforced by the brutality of the police and then the, uh, the covering up of, of a crime that comes of, of the repression of the police. We are confronted with corruption from the high straight strata of the institutions that even reaches the media, introducing us to the state of defenselessness that will characterize this new decade. From then on, the depiction of a corrupt police force and the malandros as minors becomes almost a constant in all future films. Drug trafficking also appears as a new omnipresent power that controls every institution and it is often associated with anonymous figures that occupy high political positions. On films such as Sicario, Pega, Caracos, Amor, Muerte, and, and Tres Noches. The case of Tres Noches is salient because our protagonist is a detective that grew up in the slums. And when he uncovers a major drug deal that involves an important politician, the only way to protect himself is by going back to the slum and asking for the help of a band of heavily armed minors. Um, this, in, this intends to portray, on the one hand, the existence of a strong solidarity bond between the people from the slum and on the other a geopolitical context in which citizens have to actually fight forces of the state consolidating its positioning as potential victims. Uh, here I'm using this, this concept from uh, Rodker where she talks about citizenships of fear. In general the depiction of violence becomes a lot more explicit. There is a big array of weaponry and is usually associated with drug dealing and set settling of gang fights. In Huelepega, in the middle of a gang war, they even use grenades, and the presence of armed street children suggests a chaotic turn on the street, on the street violence. As for instance, um, when El, El Chino, in, in Huelepega, he, who is a mentally disabled teenager, he gets a gun and it starts using it as a toy, shooting without control. Um, the question of social mobility or, or the idea of the future of the, the man is, uh, is associated with becoming the band leader and controlling spaces in the slum because the slum is a territory that now belongs to the Milan, to the bands and drug dealers. The police are there only to sell weapons and if, they're in, and if there is a confrontation, they need big contingents. In Huelepega, for example, they are often referred as referred to as uniform malandros. Thus, in Soy un delincuente, the, so if, as, as I mentioned before, in Soy un delincuente, we, we see how the police forbade Ramon Brizuela the transit through certain parts of the city. However, in Huelepega and Maroa, instead, um, the city seems to belong to the street children who, who know most of its secrets and transit it all day long. This is the result of the rearranging of borders based on the geopolitics of urban violence, or as put by one of the characters in Sequestro Space, Voodoo, um, after, after a failed attempt to escape by one of its victims, Pequeña es la ciudad, el barrio es grande. Uh, small is the city, the slum is big. We can see how the, uh, this is where I was, I was going to, the, that there was a shifting in the, in the, ide in the identity of uh, the representation of the Malandros and other through, through this, um, through the history in this in the in the commercial cinema, and and we can see how the image, the imagined malandro, which originated from the marginal and hybrid geography of the slum, was initially constructed as a negative order, order, that didn't really belong to the city. However, its ambivalent nature, oscillating between the figure of the hero or leader of the slum and the villain, has led to a significant transformation of its representation through time, especially when placed in contrast to corrupt and perverse figures of authority. In the end of Sequestro Express, after finally releasing the kidnapped girl, the malandros have to return to save her from two policemen who are about to rape her. Then one of the kidnapped, kidnappers tells her, I know I'm bad, but they are worst. 
if we consider that, the, that earlier in the film we have already witnessed the corruption of the police, the military, and even the shameless betrayal of a rich fiancé, who is also portrayed as a classist, uh, racist, uh, and trying to show as a perverted character, we can, interpret it, we can interpret that they, in this case, is a wider reference to the institutions and authorities of the state. As we have noted, the corruption of institutions begins to be denoted in the films from the 1980s, but there is also the, con the connoted message that in institutions can be cleaned and justice found. Thus, it is possible to work within the system. Since cinema began to be used as a tool for social critique in Venezuela, the malandro has always been de depicted as a victim of his circumstances. However, in the 50s and 70s, the context seemed to, to offer a few possibilities of social mobility of, or some sort of redemption. <coughs> and therefore, the malandro had some, some sort of aspirations. After the Caracaso, we are presented with a radical and unescapable violent reality led by immoral authorities, drug dealers and politicians, which ultimately connotes the idea that even though the malandro is a criminal, the whole system is essentially corrupt and the ultimate source of violence and corruption has always been the political system. Thus, the only possible solution evidently entails a change of the system. In this sense, I believe it is possible to place such messages as part of discourses of anti-politics, I'm using here the concept as Arais Luca uses it in, in a historical account of Venezuela, that proliferated after the Caracaso, which uncovered the profound disenchantment with the Venezuelan political parties of the, of the Cuarta República and with the whole democratic system somehow, as could be interpreted from, the, uh, from former President Rafael Caldera's public justification of the 1992 coup d'etat. All of this evidently contributed to the, late, to the later race, uh, rise to power of Hugo Chavez Frias with the promise of radical change of the system through a constitutional reform. Finally, I will argue that this, these courses of anti-politics are still present in Venezuela cinema. Um, I believe that, that that could be seen in productions, for example, uh, or the new productions in the social marginal genre, as Libertador Morales and, and La Hora Cero. Uh, where they, we can still see some of these of these um, things of these elements that I've mentioned. Um, however, um, even though I have not studied systematically more recent film production, because this paper comes from a, a research I did a few years ago, the Venezuelan cinema is probably experimenting some new changes. So uh, it's I think studying new films will entail taking into account the creation of La Villa del in 2006, which, which probably uh, which, uh, entails some propagandistic work. There is the active, active militancy of renowned filmmakers as uh, Roman uh, Chalbo and Carlos Puglia, or even there is a recent increase in productions and widening, widening of teams and, and genres. Um, there's even productions of horror films nowadays. Um, so this, I think these things will entail uh, a different approach to, to to, to new films. Um, however, I think the discourses could still be seen there um, in, in present uh, productions. I don't know if uh, familiar with some of this, but...